Hi guys, namaste. My name is Dr. Sandhya Ramanathan and I'm a GP in Auckland, New Zealand. Today, I just wanted to go through with you the principles of management of a suspected or confirmed um, mild case of COVID-19 and the equipment that you should keep at home should the need arise for you or any of your family members as we navigate through this COVID-19 pandemic. Now, first, the first most important piece of equipment that you can get, particularly if you're living in a city where access to um, hospital level care is difficult and um, is a simple medical device called a pulse oximeter. This pulse oximeter is um, widely available and um, it's relatively affordable. Um, now this device, um, when you use it to monitor the oxygen saturation levels in your blood um, every day as you are fighting the infection, will go a long way in providing reassurance that you are okay to be managed at home and you don't need to go to hospital. So I'll just show you how to use this device. You just switch it on. Okay, it normally has some batteries that it comes with that you put in the back. Then you just slot your index finger into um, the oximeter and it shines a light and determines uh, what the oxygen saturation level in is in at the moment in your blood and it looks like mine is not doing too bad at the moment it's a hundred percent and the number below is my pulse rate okay so this is a very important device um, that you can invest in to make sure that your family stays safe the normal range is between 95 and 100 if your oxygen saturation is falling below 93 and if it's associated with shortness of breath um, it is an indication as well that you definitely need to get some urgent medical advice. The other simple pieces of equipment I'd like you to um, stock up in your house um, are a packet of uh, large balloons um, and I'll explain to you this in a minute. The other thing is also um, a straw, it can be a reusable straw, plastic straw, paper straw, anything will do. Now, if somebody in your um, family is to come down with symptoms suggestive of COVID and you can't get a test, um, that's okay. Um, no need to panic. We know uh, what we can do to basically get the best possible outcome if you carefully follow what I go through in this video. Another thing I'd like to request at the outset of this video is if you can please, I humbly request, watch this video till the end. It will provide a lot of useful information and please share it with as many as your family and friends as you can as possible because in doing so, you will be saving lives. Now, the first principle of management of um, this condition at home is priming your immune system. Now, our immune system is our first port of defense in fighting any infection and COVID-19 is no different. So it's very important that we have a good diet that is rich in real food, colorful um, vegetables and fruit, and minimize any junk, processed foods and, and um, alcohol or fizzy drinks, etc. Also, you need to stay well hydrated with water and you need to remain calm because this is an issue where your mind will very much determine what will happen to your matter or to your body. So it is very important that you stay calm and these breathing exercises that I'll be showing you later will also help you do that. Now, in addition to your base immune system, uh, which you need to keep um, primed uh, with you know, your excellent eight hours sleep a night, I would, at the first sign of illness, add three um, immune boosting supplements every day and that is zinc, vitamin D and vitamin C. You can add something else if you wish like turmeric, echinacea but these three are essential zinc, vitamin D and vitamin C. Okay so that covers your immune system all right and so we'll be taking that every day. The next most important um, uh, principle of management is reduction in viral load. Now, when you get infected with um, COVID-19, it enters mainly from somebody else's infected respiratory droplets through your nose and your mouth, and also sometimes through your eyes. So if you are out and about and you can't maintain a social distance of at least two meters, or if not one meter, then you need to be wearing a mask, 
that covers your nose and your mouth um, and preferably some glasses as well because even if you do interact with somebody that may be infected this will help reduce the viral load as you um, basically interact with this person in terms of how much you, um, virus dose you are taking into your system. Now say somebody in your family starts coming down with symptoms such as um, uh, fever, dry cough, uh, running nose, sore throat, loss of smell or loss of taste it is important to start um, uh, working on diluting that viral load straight away. So the most important thing is doing gargling twice a day with warm salty water and even preferable to that is a betadine um, mouth rinse. Now if um, in addition to um, uh, rinsing your mouth it is very important to also rinse your nose. So um, there are several options available. Uh, one of them would be um, just a saline nasal spray that comes in a spray bottle which you can just um, spray up each nostril and you can repeat that as many times as you want through the day. Um, another and even better option is to get some saline made up into a little dropper bottle that has a lid that you can remove. Okay, And into that I would like you to drop a few drops of betadine concentrate. Okay, Like so. <clears throat> then you put the dropper lid back and it has another lid that goes on top and that you basically um, twice a day and if you're going in um, you basically uh, drop it into each nostril okay and that will help dilute even better than this is if you make up a saline nasal rinse and um, you can get these uh, nasal rinsing bottles okay that looks something like this and in that I have just um, put 250 mils of um, water that has been boiled in the kettle and cooled down and to that I am going to add half a teaspoon of bicarbonate so bicarb soda and half a teaspoon of salt okay and I've already added that into this and in addition to that I'm going to put in a few drops of betadine concentrate and so with this um, what you do is you do it over the sink you lean over the sink you direct the flow of the um, nasal washer back um, towards your throat as you enter your nose and the saline fluid will flush through and come out the other nostril and out of your mouth and will help um, again reduce that viral load. Okay, so there we have um, reduction in viral load. So already we've been through the first principle is priming your immune system. And the second principle is reduction in viral load. Now, another way which we can reduce the viral load before I forget is um, steam inhalation. This is very important and can also um, help with symptoms such as reduction in sense of smell. It's good to put a little dollop of um, Vicks into um, a bowl, pour some boiling water over it, cover your head with a towel and take steam and do that twice a day. So now I wanna get on to um, the most important topic I wanted to cover today, which is breathing exercises. Now, in order to um, uh, explain breathing exercises, I just wanted to um, just go through uh, a little bit about what actually your lung looks like. Now, your lungs, which take up most of your um, chest cavity, um, uh, basically are like a big sponge, okay? More shaped a little bit like this on either side. So as you can see, our lungs are smaller at the top and bigger at the base, and most of the airways are actually located at your back, all right? Now, because of this, um, if you are to collect any fluid in your lungs, that fluid with gravity is going to concentrate at the base of the lungs, so right at the back, okay? And um, it is very important that we do breathing exercises to make sure that there is no fluid accumulating at the base of the lungs and we are emptying our, our lungs adequately to try and prevent um, collapse of these little air spaces right at the bottom. So in order to do that, it is very important that we breathe well, okay? Now, in the breathing um, mechanism, the most important thing for you to focus on is expiration or breathing out, okay? Now, this is because when you breathe out, you are emptying your lungs um, of uh, any um, 
you're you're emptying your lungs as much as possible and it's the same as if you were to imagine that the oxygen that you want to take in is um, water that you want to take in and fill this sponge you want to fill this sponge with as much oxygen as possible so in order to do that you first need to clear out any of the old water that is already sitting there okay that contains carbon dioxide so we're going to I'm just going to show you and demonstrate with this um, uh, 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 sponge as I do it. So I'm going to take a big breath out first. I'm going to hold it there. And I'm going to take a big breath in and I'm going to hold it there. Okay. Now, this is a very important thing to remember and to practice. When you are doing um, something such as box breathing, which is uh, breathing all the way out um, for three seconds, hold. Um, imagine that you're drawing a box as you're breathing out. One, two, three, hold. You draw the line up, then breathe in. One, two, three, hold. You draw the line down. Okay, so this is a very important thing for you to practice when you are well. Now, um, when you are sick, it is very important that you do some exercises that will help maintain the space, um, those little sacs at the bottom of your uh, lungs and um, keep them open and patent and not collapsing down with fluid. Okay, so I have a very good exercise which um, was given to me by a very, uh, the very clever anaesthetist mum of one of my classmates. Her name is Dr. Gracie Ong and she is in Malaysia and she's given this great tip of um, blowing balloons, um, which is a method of simulating what they do with a ventilator and opening up your airways as much as possible. And I have done this uh, on somebody I've treated for COVID and if, despite having being an ex-smoker um, and having had a history of pulmonary TB in the past, um, they've managed while being sick with COVID to hit saturation levels of 100 with the benefit of these um, balloon exercises. So I'm just going to demonstrate what I want you to do. Okay, so I want you to take the balloon and try and blow up the balloon over a period of, say, about three breaths, okay? Okay, that's one breath. Okay, I'm gonna get a good hold of it, and now I'm gonna give it another one. One more. Okay, and then I can take the balloon. And now let's just check how my oxygen saturation is doing. And I'm sure it's improved because that was a lot of effort. So basically, what you're doing there is you're blowing air again, blowing out against resistance. Um, and uh, that is a very good way to keep your airways patent. And there you have, I've just hit 100. Okay, now if you find that it's quite difficult, if you have um, elderly family members and they find it quite difficult to blow a balloon, you can simulate, pretend you are blowing a balloon, so they can just, you know, um, pretend they have an imaginary balloon and just... and breathe in like that. But another simple exercise is using our straw and a glass of water is to blow bubbles into that glass of water is another way to more gently create resistance. Okay, so we will be doing this. And this is another very good way and a good exercise to do. And I would suggest that you would do these exercises seated um, and you would do these um, several times a day and recheck your oxygen saturations. Now, in addition to these exercises, um, the other extremely important thing is your posture. Now, to demonstrate that, I've got my um, beautiful uh, doll, Rani, 
and uh, a little cushion. Now, as I um, explained to you, the lungs are mainly, the, most of the airways are mainly situated at the back. So if we are to lie down for prolonged periods of time, what's going to happen is those airways, which are mainly located at the back, are going to get squashed and um, more likely to collapse. So when you are sick, it is very important, and it's good to start doing this when you're feeling well, is to sleep on your front. Now, you might think that that's very uncomfortable, and if you have the pillow under your head this way, it is going to be uncomfortable. But if you rotate the pillow long ways and you sleep with it under your chest, as you can see, Rani is able to fully expand her chest at the back. And I've had another case where a lady uh, in her 70s was having saturations at 92 and she couldn't have access to any hospital beds. But just by sleeping at night um, on her tummy, she was able to bring her saturations back up to a safe level. So this is a very, very important thing. If you are sick, you are not meant to spend prolonged time lying on your back and it's preferable to lie on your front which is what they call um, a prone position and it's what they're using in hospitals and also in ventilating these patients. It is also very important to get medical advice even if it's virtual at the onset of your symptoms because I know in um, some countries they have um, protocols for simple antibiotics which they can prescribe which are most effective if they've taken early and most of these uh, simple can be taken by most people even if they have underlying conditions. Um, one of them is azithromycin um, 500 milligrams uh, once a day for five days and some countries are adding in um, hydroxychloroquine as long as um, the patient's ECG is normal and they have no other medical problems but again that would only be done um, with somebody uh, medical overseeing it but um, the important thing is to stay calm and if you do these three things, I'll just reiterate, they were um, boosting and priming your immune system. Number two was um, reduction in viral load. And number three was breathing exercises and maintaining a, a close eye on your saturations every day, at least for the first 14 days of the illness and making sure that it stayed um, above uh, between 95 and 100. Then you can be very happy that you uh, will be fine and you will make a full recovery. Um, if you need, um, what I will do is I will, uh, that is quite a lot of information I've covered, but I will um, keep a brief description in um, uh, the description box below. Um, and uh, just remember that um, there will be light at the end of this tunnel that um, if you use the knowledge that we have gained over the last six months um, and uh, you practice these things, you have a very good chance of making a full recovery and you will not need hospital level of care. So um, please take all the adequate precautions to not get infected in the first place and please stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you.